Hello YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream, and if you're like me, you have a champion generator, and you may have issue with it. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. We have a 2020 Rockwood Ultralight, and we have two rooftop AC units. One's a 15,000 BTU, and the other one's a 13.5. Now, even though our generator is a 3400 watt, peak watt, running on gasoline, it does not, for whatever reason, run the 15,000 BTU air conditioner that's on the roof. So, what we've done actually is installed micro air easy starts on both rooftop ACs. However, the people at Champion told me that there should be no reason those easy starts are needed for the 15,000. You can see what we have is a dual fuel. I'm just going to refer to the gasoline side because most likely you're not going to have the dual fuel. But quite honestly, all the generators that Champion sell that basically look like this one, I think they start as low as a 2800 watt all the way up to a 3500 watt. They're all the same. They're all going to be the same as far as what it's going to take to pull stuff apart. And that's what I've got to do on this. So let me tell you the situation once again and what we had going on. When we first bought this Champion generator, it was to power our 13,500 BTU air conditioner on our old RV. It was a 1992 Terry, and it was in really good shape, uh, except the roof needed replaced. But as far as all the components, they weren't used heavily. And the rooftop air, even though it was an old Coleman mock unit, this generator would not start it until I installed a hard start capacitor on the old Terry camper. Once I did that, this unit ran it fine. Now when I talked with Champion at that time, they said it should have run it. It should have run it without a hard start capacitor, but they said maybe it's because it's an older unit and maybe the compressor is getting to the point where, you know, it might be wearing. Now, I can tell you that that unit that was on the roof of that old RV used to get ice cold and there was never any issues with it, except this generator would not run it again without that hard start capacitor for the compressor. So now fast forward and we sold that RV and we get our brand new Rockwood RV. So I go ahead and I take this unit and I fire it up and I plug in the RV using a dog bone adapter to adapt it down to the TT30 plug. And it starts the 13,500 BTU air conditioner, no issue whatsoever. So at that point I try the 15,000 and it won't. It goes into an overload. It stumbles a little bit and it goes into an overload. Now you got to make sure that you don't have other stuff on inside the RV and in this case I had everything turned off. The only thing that I had going on was the rooftop AC unit and after talking with Champion they said that should not be the case. They said this should run it just fine and they're correct and the way I know that they're correct is this isn't a team of 3000 watt generator and of course that wattage is less than the 3400 peak that the champions rated for and even though I was running both on gasoline this Atima would run the 15,000 BTU rooftop AC on that RV without any problems even though it was lesser of a wattage peak wattage as far as the rating and the amperage that it was rated at as far as running amps and starting amps once I told Champion what I was experiencing and we went over all the steps, that's when Champion really stood out and showed what they were all about. Even though this generator is not under warranty at this point, it only has 128 hours on it, but it has been a couple years since I've owned it. And he said that just jostling around, sometimes the control units might have an issue and they might underperform. Again, this will run a 13,500 BTU AC, but not a 15,000. So at that point, I was asking him some of my options, and he said, no problem, I will send a control unit out to you, and they did so at no charge. That's right, it's not under warranty, and they sent me a $200 part at no charge because they want to make the customer, me, happy. And sure enough, about four days later, this arrived at my doorstep and this is the control unit this is the brains this is the main thing that powers or makes this an inverter not just a regular generator and the fact that they sent me this for free 
I mean, it's just incredible. So at that point, he asked if he needed to direct me to a service center or if I was able to do the work myself. Now, I am a certified generator mechanic. However, I have never had to work on an inverter generator. Everything that I've done has always been open frame contractor generators. So it's going to be interesting to see what it's going to take to put this in. However, I think I should be able to handle it. But those are famous last words, huh? So what I'm going to do is start tearing this apart and I'll show you what I had to do and hopefully you can follow along if you have to make this same repair and that's repairing or replacing the control module inside your unit now I'm tapping this side because this is such a critical component that's why it's on this end far away from the exhaust buffered from the engine and where the cool air gets to hit first so this is always being cooled and that's why there's so many cooling fins because it's such a critical piece so I'm going to go ahead and start messing around with this and seeing what it takes to pull it apart and again show you the steps. In my case I've added an hour meter and I actually have it adhered to what I believe is going to be a half that comes off of this handle. I do have to remove a Phillips headed screw here, here, and then there's going to be one here and one here and one in the center and at that point I'm going to have to pry my meter off and move it out of the way also down low there's going to be a 10 millimeter head there and also right there once all those parts are removed at that point it should come relatively easy and loose okay so the screws that were in the handle they're relatively short they have lock washers on them and also standard washers and then the two screws that are here are a little bit longer you can see but other than that they look essentially the same and then the bottom ones they have spacers built into them again 10 millimeter socket will take those off at that point everything should come apart and yes it does now there's some things of course you don't want to disturb whenever you pull stuff apart I'm gonna clean this out do a little housekeeping and that's uh, this canister here uh, that has to do with uh, you know vapor and overflow and all kinds of weird stuff and of course you don't want any of that to become an issue um, it's basically a breather now I'll recommend that you should disconnect your battery just in case uh, although that should just be on the starting side of things I'm going to uh, leave it connected in my case I don't recommend that but we'll see how that goes and if that's a bad idea now I see that uh, these look like 10 millimeters up here I'm gonna have to pull this one off it looks like this one off here and uh, then maybe disconnect this here definitely disconnect this one uh, actually it looks like that the only one I need to disconnect is here we'll, we'll find out and then I'll get back with you um, it could be that this thing just lifts off that's a good possibility now I'll go ahead and give you caution at this point I know you're looking at everything and trying to figure out how it came apart uh, not a big deal very easy if you do not have protective boots that are covering your terminals on your battery you need to disconnect your battery I, I would think that probably the best thing to do is to disconnect the battery and move it out of the way I'm going to try to work around this but I found that if I wanted to reach in behind here and disconnect all of these connectors and then this whole control unit will slide out I could slide the new one in and then reconnect all the connectors I'm not going to mess with that. I wanted to see what I'm disconnecting. So uh, this is what the bolts look like. Uh, these here, 7 millimeter head is right here. And there's another one that's identical right there. This one here is the one that actually holds the control unit from sliding in and out into its mounts. And then again, two 10 millimeter headed bolts are, are up here. Real easy to take off. So now that I have it basically position this way I move the battery out of the tray because it's kind of connected to everything and I'm going to tilt this back and disconnect the wires don't don't put too much stress on them because they are some very small wires I'm going to start disconnecting these and basically memorizing where they go now if you need to you need to mark them hopefully the uh, connectors are kind of 
uh, one way only so you can only connect you know this connector to this plug this connector to this plug and so forth uh, but I don't know that for sure however I'm going to take my time and uh, go ahead and remove all the connectors put them on the new board then when the new board is slid in after this one's out of place okay so you're not going to disconnect these connectors over here that's connected to this small device right here um, that's part of the frame so you don't have to worry about it it's not going to be in the way every other connector is unique this connector can only go in one place and this connector can only go into one place so you got a total of five connectors you got this one here that can only go in one place but these two are identical in every single way the red wires go on the top so this connector here whenever I put it back in it's going to be the reds that are on top and then in my case these are white you're going to put the white ones down below because these connectors are identical in every way and so are these openings so you couldn't reverse that if you accidentally lose track of what's happening there so back together uh, it goes but let me get this piece out again I'm just going to slide this out now just straight out because there's nothing holding it it's just in its rubber isolators so you see here I'm just supporting this just to wiggle this out and that's it this is the old control module so this control module as far as we can tell is just a low output for whatever reason the new ones going in now and you can see here's where that one screw that holds everything in goes that's that longer screw this one here but other than that it just slides back in place now I can tell you right now <laughs> you gotta be careful because my rubber insulator actually came out with the control board or the control unit so we want to get that back into place so this has a place or a slot to slide into so we'll just lower this back down and again this isn't rocket science that's happening here pretty straightforward all right now that we've got that back in uh, we're going to plug in all the plugs the way they came out that one goes there okay so now those are all back together so now we're just going to reinstall all the screws that I just talked about those two 10 millimeter screws up top uh, 10 millimeter headed screws uh, these to hold the framework that the control unit goes in and then of course that real small screw that holds the control unit from sliding in and out so once you've got this all back together again everything tight just go through your wiring one more time make sure there's no loose connections that you didn't pull a wire out of the connector on accident go ahead and just give them a little push again we could have probably left this uh, in now that I know which wires actually get unplugged um, you just have this connector down here this large connector again you don't mess with either one of these wires if you want to move this out of the way you can so that'll give you a better idea what you need to remove and then this this and this um, once you take this one bolt out you could just slide the whole unit out put the new one back in and plug it in uh, without going through the trouble of removing these frame bolts or these frame supports or uh, for that matter the battery um, other than disconnecting it so everything looks real good so I got it all back together got my meter back on there everything's tightened up gave it the once around looked at everything put the battery cover back on so the only thing I have to do now is just fire this thing up and test it I'm gonna use my shop vac since it's sitting here uh, the shop vacs about eight amps and it's uh, supposed to be two and a half horsepower or whatever <laughs> that's marketing but it does say eight amps so that'll give me an idea if it's you know doing something at least uh, and then maybe I'll screw around and do some 30 amp stuff on the RV here but first let's go ahead and start it battery on uh, go ahead and pull the choke economy mode off and hit the starter well the good news is that it started I didn't think that it wanted but you never know go ahead and plug this in and turn it on yep so that worked go ahead and turn this back off again I'll put it on econo mode I did 
allow the battery to continue to charge as it's been sitting for a little while. Let's go ahead and try this again. Seems to be okay. All right, so as you run your rooftop AC units and it's hot outside like it is today, you're going to notice that they will draw more amperage as the time it's running goes on. So the first five minutes, the first 10 minutes, the amperage will climb even though the compressors have already kicked on and it's just uh, you know a loss of energy because of the heat that everything running up there is generating. Um, you have a loss of energy. Now, what I'm getting at is with that said, I look now and the overload is lit up clearly. It's still running, but it's definitely in an overload mode. It doesn't look like you can run both rooftop AC units with a 3400 watt dual fuel on gasoline and we are above sea level, but not very much, maybe a thousand feet. I, I, I can't even imagine that much. All right, so that's it. That's how you place the control unit on your Champion generator. Call Champion, call their tech line. Those guys up there are great. They answer your questions right away, and they truly want to help. They truly want to keep you running with Champion. So if you have any questions, give them a call. Anyways, that's it. Hope this video helped you out. If you're looking at a generator, I suggest you look at Champion. I've had very good luck with these and it's done a great job. The link's down below. Click the link, it'll take you right to it. That'll help this channel out and I'll continue to be able to do repair videos like this for RV owners that have generators that are out on the road that might need to do the same repair. I appreciate it guys. As always, I hope to see you out there. Bye.